Stop the threat. My name is James Toll. On this week's episode, we bring you to Houston, Texas for a reenactment which we have entitled Storefront Stick Up. And thank you for joining us. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I'd like to start this by discussing the difference and maybe describing aggravated robbery because that's what we're dealing with today. Well, in the state of Connecticut where I worked, the, we classified robberies as either first, second, or third degree, and that had a bearing on either possession of weapons or severity of, of the assault that was associated with the robbery. So obviously a first degree robbery would be an aggravated robbery, it would either be a, uh, with, with a weapon with or weapon. injuries. Okay, so that injuries. could be any weapon? That could be any, yes, any okay. weapon. All right. That doesn't have to so be a firearm. So it could be a stun gun, it could be Absolutely. a stick. Or a facsimile firearm. Or a facsimile firearm, okay, all right. Because Good. the element of this is, is by fear, by force, right. is, is the dictator. It doesn't require it to be any specific weapon. Okay, so it's fear and force, okay, yeah. I got that. Yeah, you use a knife, baseball bat, firearm, whatever. Finger in your pocket. As long as yeah. the, people, uh, the victim... Finger in your pocket could do that because it could be intimidating because you don't know what it is. Of course, yeah. I didn't even think of that part. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, let me give you some stats. Uh, this is from the FBI. 43.5% uh, of the aggravated robberies take place on the street or the highway. Comes as no surprise to any of us, I guess. I guess the surprise I had when I read these stats was 1.9% only... 1.9% occur in a bank, which I thought would be a higher stat, but yeah, what do I know? So if we, if we try to uh, give more explanation to aggravated robbery, do you have something from your... Yeah, we would have a lot of street robberies where we'd have drug dealers sticking up drug dealers or specific guys. We had a group of guys called the Stick Up Boys. They made a living out of sticking up dope dealers walking around taking their dope, taking their money. And then a lot of those crimes were unreported. We'd find out from an informant or something that had happened because unless you had shots fired, who's calling the cops? Right, right, exactly, yeah. And that's a large metropolitan area. Now, Rich, you're in a kind of a smaller area. Do you mm -hmm. have as much of the aggravated robberies as...? Well, I, I think what those stats prove is that you're more likely to get robbed walking down the street Everybody thinks about being in a gas station, being in, in uh, the bank. The you know, you're more likely to be robbed walking down the street than you are in, in the bank. And I, I think that's proof that you need to be armed and, and be prepared and, and be alert. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I think it's, it's we, we tend to focus on what's the obvious and, and we dismiss what we believe to be the, the, the least likely locations, which end up being probably the most likely locations. And, and you look at these stats, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dismiss uh, those that are taking place in a bank. I mean, because you have to look at, uh, from these stats, how they're sampling that and then how they're actually categorizing anything that's taking place in a bank that could even fall under a different category that they're not seeing as aggravated. Yeah, and that's very true because a lot of the FBI uh, stats, and even from local communities and big cities, they categorize things differently. So, if, for instance, if I, tr if I go out and I try to get stats on a home invasion, I mean, that's almost impossible because very few... Uh, law enforcement agencies have a term home invasion. It's just a it's just a, a robbery that took place in a residence. Well, or a burglary. Or yeah. a burglary. Yeah. Well, right. yeah. many, many times you'll have a, a trespass that was a, basically an attempted burglary gets dismissed as a criminal trespass, so it doesn't even fall under the stats of burglary. And when you're in detectives trying to follow up on that, sometimes it's hard to put two and two together because of how the officer has categorized that event. Okay. Well, just to sum it up then, uh, aggravated robbery is going to take place anytime. Uh, fear and force are used. Does that a, that's pretty? Yeah. That's a general yeah, safe that, statement. A, a weapon of any kind, anywhere from a simulated hand using your hand as a weapon in a pocket to uh, an actual weapon. E even if you just say, "Hey, I've got a gun in my pocket." Okay, mm -hmm. you can even just say it as they do in a bank in many times. Yeah. Hey, when we come back. I'm going to show you part one. Don't go away.
Welcome back, viewers. Uh, thank you for coming back. You know, we've talked a little bit about aggravated robbery. We really haven't dealt with the legal side of that, and some of the implications there are interesting. But I want to show you part one. So let's watch part one. Give me the bag or I'll shoot you. Okay, um, I don't really have information that says that the bad guy in the parking lot was actually targeting that individual. Um, and based upon the information we do have, he may well have been sitting there waiting for a target rather than knowing a target was going to arrive. So the first thing I kind of noticed is the sloppy way the guy has got putting stuff up on top of the car. And uh, I mean, you're kind of like drawing attention to yourself because you're a little bit stupid, maybe. You want to go with anything? Maybe a little fuzzy first thing in the morning. It could be. I mean, there could be legitimate reasons. Yeah, I, I, I'll buy that. It could be legitimate reasons. I think if you're in that situation where you feel like that you needed to carry a gun and you're, you have this unknown bag kind of a thing, I don't know. Seems like you would have thought through this a little better. Well, remember complacency, though, and and this might be a routine thing that he does based on the business that he's got. And it's just just his morning routine. He doesn't think anything of it. Then so, he should probably be his own agent or, or of protection here, right. mm -hmm. and and he needs to be a little bit more aware of his surroundings. Uh, when he's walking up to the door, everything uh, is there in his hands. He has no way to get to right. the gun that he's he, he is wearing. Up. Yeah. Again, I just thought it was a little sloppy on his part, uh, and uh, it could be done better. Uh, I know there's some store people out there, managers and owners, who probably go through this routine. Tell me what your plan is. Email me. Let me know uh, if we're totally off base here. But it would seem to us that it was a little sloppy and that there was sitting someone in the parking lot waiting for someone sloppy to come along and so he could take advantage of. I mean, just looking at the guy, I don't know that he was a hardened criminal. I don't have a, uh, a lot of information on him. I, I, I'll give you some results later in the show, but um, that's my first impression. And, I, and I'm going to agree with you on this, that I think he was just waiting for something to take place. Yeah, he knew what he was going to do. He just didn't know who he was going to do it to. Well, it goes back to those t statistics uh, just a few minutes ago. This was a crime of opportunity. This isn't the guy walking into the bank and, and robbing the bank, hey, this this guy's getting out of his car. This is a perfect yeah. opportunity. Classic Absolutely. street crime. Yeah. True. Right. So uh, situational awareness, and I've kind of wore that expression out. I, I'm, it sometimes even aggravates me to say it. But that's, you know, if, if you're a, sh a, a shop owner and you, you are coming to your store, um, do you cruise around the parking lot and look for somebody sitting in the car? I mean, it's all nice to well, say that you would do that. Th this is a crime of opportunity because the suspect sees the prey. Uh, he, he has no idea what's going on. So, you know, again, you, you might say that you're running that into the ground. Well, I thought, Rich, I gotta go. When we come back, we're gonna pick up this conversation, so don't go away. Welcome back, viewers. You know, I think we've established that the store owner or manager uh, could have done things a little bit better. But let's see what happens in part two. See how well he does there. Give 
Give me the bag or I'll shoot you. They're just my meds. Do you think I'm stupid? I know it's full of cash, now give me the bag. Fine. Open the store. Open the store! Okay, with all we had to say in the beginning, it appears as though in the end, uh, he came out of this well. I don't know whether it was luck or, uh, what do you think? He kind of surprised me that he actually saw an opportunity and acted, right. because up till then, I kind of thought that he had the gun just for show, because he was so sloppy about everything else. Yeah. He did a pretty good job. He presented the weapon, he moved, yeah. fired yeah. multiple shots. Right. I would have liked to have seen him use that pillar for cover after the, the perp went down, right. but all in all, pretty good job. The ending seemed pretty good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there were some things leading up to the ending. If we were going to criticize something, right. when he, he, he said, it's, it's only my meds, it's like, well, that's, that's a good reason for me to rob you. Uh, sure. I'll, I'll be happy with the meds, you know. Uh, maybe tossing the bag to him may not have been a good idea. How about tossing it over there and then going for your weapon? I don't know. I mean, if, if, I, don't, I don't think he thought about that. I think he thought, here, take the bag, fine. And hopefully he's going to walk go. off. And, yeah. and that's when he decided to open the store. And that's when the victim decided to take some sort of action. Because yeah, once he got inside that store, he yeah. might never come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. going inside the store. And I think he was alert enough to understand that. Yeah. My guess is that the shootout was going to happen now. Um, now, let, let's talk about that for just a second. And again, I know that we go out and we go to the very ends of these things, um, but is a shootout in a parking lot a good idea? Or might it have been better to do the shootout inside? I mean, now you got bullets flying around. Uh, is, that a, is that smarter than taking him inside? If you get inside? the opportunity yeah. right then, you, you might not get another opportunity right. once you get inside. Okay, so move on the first Absolutely. opportunity. Took the words out of my mouth, I agree. Yeah. That opportunity I mean, may never arise you, again. You, you need to seek the opportunity. And I, I mean, picking this apart Monday morning quarterbacking, yeah, sure. you could say, you know, all the potential misses. And, and yeah, that's, that's true. And that's where the advocation of training comes into play. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that shouldn't be your concern when you go into action. It, you're taking that action should be to preserve life and limb. Yeah. yeah, okay. I, I think we could go along, speaking of training, I think we could go along with the fact that it appears as though he had thought through this once before. As you said, he oh, was moving when he, when he fired. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that that's a natural reaction from a lot of people. I think that's a trained reaction. But, you know, I could be wrong there. Um, so I was happy with that as well, that, that he kept moving. I like the idea of seeking cover. Uh, mm -hmm. um, that might have been something he might have thought of, but I think he was in pretty much control yes. when he... I said uh, more, more after the fact mm -hmm. that he had the opportunity, but that's a minor, you know, you know, adjunct part of this, which is about the only thing that I can see he did wrong. Other than that, as far as when he got to the actual gunfight, he did pretty well. Yeah. Did, did it seem to anybody else uh, like he almost hesitated there for just a second when he started to go for the gun? Didn't he go for the gun, almost go for the gun once earlier, where he kind of reached? I, I thought he was I, I, going to, yeah. 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 And, and then I, he... And it, it could, that would have been a good opportunity. Yeah. I thought it was coming out then, actually, yeah. myself. Yeah. And uh, I don't know that. Uh, I think, as it was described in the report, he was going for his keys. Open the store! And uh, that's when he changed his mind, and he made this decision to do the shootout outside the store. And that was pretty much how it went. And it appeared, if, if the, uh, you know, the video was true to the actual event, that it was early in the morning and there wasn't a ton of people around. Right. Right. And also that was in his favor to some degree. Yeah. We don't <laughs> know that he wasn't armed. The I mean, the bad guy uh, didn't have a partner. Okay, so that might be something else that would have come into play there had he had a partner sitting in the car or back up somewhere. Well, that's kind of why I said maybe it would have been a good idea if he would have 
moved to a position of cover and then made yeah. his phone call. But again, I don't want to nitpick yeah. at that right. point. Well, that's what we're doing. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. nitpicking, well, and we are Monday morning. And, and at least he did seek out to contact somebody on the phone, yeah. whether that was a 911 call or he's right. calling somebody else. But at least he, he did take that action instead of not knowing what to do. Yeah. So he, he had some kind of plan. And he did keep the gun pointed at the bad guy when he called 911. Yeah. He'd only expended three rounds, as I counted. Um, so he did have some ammunition left. There was no reason to start reloading at that right. point. So, uh, so the ending maybe justifies the beginning? Is that what we're reaching the conclusion I, I, to here? I don't know if the ending justifies being sloppy in your everyday life and, and getting around. Your, your whole idea is to avoid these situations to begin with. Don't, don't let yourself fall into that trap and then be forced to, to seek an opportunity uh, to defend your life when someone's got a gun pointed at you. Harden yourself up a little bit and make yourself less vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, right. No one can be always vigilant. I mean, it's, it's impossible. You know, you talk about situational yeah, awareness correct. for every second right. and, all, right. and all, but this and guy almost went even. over the top. Right. I mean, he was really careless right. and, right. and that precipitate. Maybe, you know, driving around the parking lot and all, no. But maybe look around at least a little bit. Right. So you don't, you're not comfortable with the idea, and we're going to run out of time before I have an answer for this, that he could have unlocked the store, gone inside, and locked the door behind him. I don't think that time was there. No, I think the, the, the no. guy said a gun. Up the the, the minute right. you do that, yeah. all yeah. right. Hey, when we come back, there's probably some more things we can mention. I have some emails for you. Don't go away. Welcome back, viewers. Uh, you know, we didn't really touch on the legal part here. I, I don't know that there's a lot of things that we need to be concerned with. I, I, can we all agree that was a justifiable shoot? Yeah. He was defending himself. I don't think any court in the world would have any problem with that or any jury would have any problem with that. Um, could he have faced down the guy gun to gun? I mean, that's kind of like a Hollywood thing. Uh, no. That's um, a dumb decision. <laughs> yeah. right. Not at that distance. <laughs> would he, he made verbal threats. He pointed the gun I'm at him. Stupid? He had the gun. Oh, they were cash. really close. His life was easily in jeopardy. And he used deadly physical force, which I think he was completely justified. You, yeah. you know, I'm even going to go just a little bit further than that. And I'm going to say that when faced with that kind of a situation, when there's a gun on you, there's a whole lot of courage involved here. Okay? Now he's made the decision that he's going to defend himself, his store, and his property with a gun already on him. So I give the guy credit Open this uh, that door. he went through with, a, with what he thought needed to be done, and I'm happy with that. Huh? Yeah. We're all happy oh, yeah. with that. And accomplished it. And, and accomplished. Yeah. So I don't think there's a legal issue here. Huh? No. I don't okay. believe so. No, I, don't I don't think so either. But I do have a couple of emails that might, uh, well, I don't know. Let me just read one. This, uh, this particular email is from Ron. And Ron says, I, tonight I'm watching the purse snatching segment, which was another story, which I know you've probably seen. Uh, something I've noticed is this. The idea of stop the threat is to give up. Let the punk have what they want because I don't want to get into trouble. And he goes on to ask, why have I gone through all this training and done everything right to allow the bad guy to walk away? Anybody want to take that? I, yeah. I don't see the purpose of the show as walking away. I think it's about choosing when to fight. Well, and you have to be smart when to choose that. People, professional side, non-professional side, they look at conflicts sometimes from, you know, I've got this training, I can do this, I got this. But you know, there's there's other humans that are that are in this mix. There's other other thoughts that are going on. And you need to look out for opportunities not to get into a rolling gunfight with somebody, but but avoidance and 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 it isn't so much giving up. It, it's what's what's the safest and and the best decision for for you, for your loved ones, for yourself, right. for your I think property. That's, that's well said. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you still want to get in the car and go home. Absolutely. Yeah, right. And, I think and you don't want to spend the rest of your life in court. And I think your training allows you to do that. You're tra if, you're, if you're, you are trained, you can make those sound decisions as to when to use force and when not to. 
Yeah, I like yeah. that. Sure. And uh, I hope that you are training that well and that you are looking into that. And I hope that's one of the reasons why you're watching the show, by the way. Okay, I have another one, which is almost a reverse from the first one. And this is from Mike in Oregon, who says, Hello, James, you're doing a great service in teaching people to exercise restraint and the smart way to go through a critical decision. They need to understand that shooting someone is to be avoided at all possible. Uh, awareness and avoidance uh, is the best course of action. Um, and he'd like this, he, say, he ends it by saying, maybe you and the pros on your panel could talk a little bit more about avoiding. And I think we have. Uh, I think that's probably misinterpreted by many that as we said earlier, that we're not trying to, we're not, we don't want you to get into a gunfight. I can say, just say that right now. I don't want you to, anybody agree on that? Nobody wants someone to get into a gunfight. Yeah, no, without, without a doubt. And having, having been involved as a police officer on the delivery side of that, uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a uncomfortable process when it takes place. And it's something that you don't necessarily want to do. Uh, you, you have to under certain circumstances, obviously, but to completely avoid that, to not involve yourself or involve your family, involve your, your, your children, your wife, whatever the case may be, is really the ultimate goal in this, is, is to make good, solid, sound decisions when they're appropriate. Yeah, Wes, uh, we're going to have to end on that, actually. We have run out of time. Thank you very much for watching. I know you have many choices. We'll see you again next week. Be safe, be trained, stay alert.